All right, we're live, Chase. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. This is, really? this is Julie Santiago. I'm here with our incredible client, Chase. Welcome, Chase. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Uh, we were just chatting about, you know, we always get to like do a little catch up before we go live. And 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 Chase was just saying that um, just how, how different things are and how, how different you are now than when we met in September a year ago. And mm -hmm. so I am just going to take us all on the journey to celebrate you, Chase. Your journey over the past year plus has been so phenomenal. And, um, you know, I will let you share with everybody what yeah. life looks like now. And, and yeah. I, do, I do want us to start with that. What is life look like now and then um let's talk about what what was what life was like when you came to us so whichever order of those you want to do them in let's just start with that so people can get an idea i'll start by saying that life when i first found you like there was some reason i think i saw a facebook ad or something and it was like are you burnt out ready to throw it all away ready to run for the hills and i was like oh my god this is totally me like i spend my quiet time whenever i could like looking at like lake houses or like cabins in the woods that i could run away to and things like that like i just was so miserable and so unhappy and uncomfortable with everything that was going on and there was a lot of things that I should have been happy about, but it just wasn't right for some reason. Like everything from the outside in looked like it should have been fine, but I didn't feel fine. And there was some reason why I wasn't, I wasn't okay. And so I found the, whatever it was, an ad and we did the the call, right? The initial call, just an introductory call. Um, and then a lot of things changed. And then jump forward 18 months or not quite 18 months. And it's like, my life is exactly what I would have wanted back then. Like I look back and I think to myself, like, this is what I wanted at that time. And it was not easy to get here, but here is exactly what I've always wanted as an adult, as a female, as a, as a professional, as a mother, there are so many things that I would have wanted for myself. And now I have the realization of those. And it's, it's, it's incredible. It's just incredible to see how that has changed in just in a year, a little more than a year. Yeah. Well, okay. So one of the things you said before we started, you were like, and even during, so we're filming this in 2020, even yeah. during COVID time and like crazy yes. election time and yes. you still, your life still in like mm -hmm. what is the most challenging year for so many yeah. people is still significantly better. What you said, realized mm -hmm. what, you know, what you wanted as an adult, as a female, as a professional, as a mom now in like the hardest year ever. So tell us what life looks like now for you that feels like oh this is this is what i want to tell us what it looks on the outside like what it looks like on the outside and then of course we'll want to talk about what it feels like on the inside because the, there's usually a disconnect there mm -hmm. um or there was when you came to us for sure and yeah. as there is for many women so tell us what it looks like on the outside so i work full time i have two little kids who are ages five and three i have a husband who works full time so in the times of covid we are super grateful that we've been able to stay employed we haven't had any question about our employment which i know a lot of people are dealing with which is really really hard but we're so grateful that we've been able to work um remotely or work from home or now my company has us in the office and so i'm in the office regularly um that said i have my my children were able to send, we were able to afford to send them to a private school so that they could go to school so we could work and we weren't having to juggle virtual learning which i know is a tremendous headache for a lot of people also and all of these things are in place because i was really clear about what was important to me i knew what was important to me that i knew that this was something i needed to to bend on and this is something i needed to hold firm on so i needed to i could bend on certain things but there were certain things i said no that's not going to work for us we need to do this and I did not have a sense of my own internal compass or decision-making process or boundaries around things that if I didn't have that in place, I would have been far more, um, I guess, what's the word, like impacted by others' decisions or other suggestions or other ways of dealing with crisis situations such as COVID and such as everything. But I knew what was right for me and I knew what was right for my family. And I made decisions that were consistent with those values and true to those values. And because of that, it has made all the difference in the world because I'm not living by somebody else's expectations. Like my child was supposed to start, my child was supposed to start kindergarten this year. And I said, we're not doing that. I said, I'm not doing virtual kindergarten for a five-year-old. I said, we're going to leave him in a pre-K program and he's going to be in person where he has an education, where he's with people, they have masks, they're very well, you know, very well strong protocols about, you know, the 
temperature checks on the way in, et cetera. And I feel that like they're doing the right thing. And I know it's the right thing for our family. And so I was really clear about my own needs and my own values. And I was able to dictate that in what we chose to do going forward. This is huge. And so, so, so the people who didn't know you before, I just yeah. want to paint the picture of the yes. of that. <laughs> so, yes. so that may be like, okay, cool. But like, what was it like before? Oh my gosh, before it was like, Anybody that anybody suggested you should do this, you should be doing that, you should go here, you should try this. I was like, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that too. Okay, I guess I need to be doing this, or I guess I need to look into that, or I guess I should be doing this, or I, my kids should be going to school, or I should be up a grade, and I should, you know, I should be making these decisions about work, etc. I never had any confidence in my own self um, decision making process. Like I just didn't trust my own decision making process and my own judgment of what was going on around me. And that was, it made me so influenced, it's so influenced by the people around me. And I didn't have a North star to then be able to say, I'm choosing this and this is right for me, whether people like it or don't like it, that's not my problem. That's, that's right for me. That's and I, didn't, I did not have that sense of self 18 months ago. I did not have that. That's tremendous. So in working with us and learning what you learned through the course of the program and then beyond, mm -hmm. right, what you're saying is that it's given you a deeper sense of your own self, right, mm -hmm. your own North Star, your own value system, your own priorities, the ability to set boundaries. And then mm -hmm. I would also say, and I've watched this happen for you, really the ability to speak up and say like, mm -hmm. no, this isn't right for me. Mm -hmm. and yes, this is. Yeah, and, and a year and a half ago, you weren't able to do that. So you would just get kind of thrown in all the directions. And it was a lot of anxiety making and a lot of burnout, right? It was a ton of burnout because the burnout was because I was always trying to live up to what somebody else thought I should be doing or where I should be going. And I never, it didn't feel right. And so therefore, I never was in the right place to be moving forward in that direction because it wasn't sitting right in my soul. It wasn't sitting right in my core. And um, the boundaries thing that you mentioned, like I literally can decide like my life is a, B and B, B, like before boundaries and after boundaries, like it is tremendously different. Um, when, when the initial part of the program that I don't want to give away anything, but the initial part of the program where you kind of drill down to you, the way you give away your power. And one of the ways I gave away my power in a very strong way was being a people pleaser and just trying to keep everybody happy, trying to keep everybody comfortable. And by doing whatever somebody else wanted me to do and I thought that was the right way to be going through life. I thought that was just a positive and friendly way to do things. And I realized that it was actually my complete undoing. Like it was my complete undoing by being such a people pleaser. And that was something that I had to unlearn, but I unlearned through your process. And then now I'm able to say, I respect that, but that's not for me, thank you. And, and I can clearly hold a compassionate boundary and I and I've been practicing it again and again and again. And the more you practice it, the better you get at it. And you you really start to you step away from any self doubt that you had about that boundary. Even when prior to that, for the last however many years, my entire life, I've always been you know letting somebody else cross over those boundaries and then wondering why I was resentful. That's huge. So the boundary, so learning boundaries has, mm -hmm. has and I, I I remember that moment where you posted <laughs> the first time of like my life A B and B B after boundaries before boundaries. Um, I know that it has it has actually led to tremendous career changes for yeah. you. So I want you to share um, the new opportunity and just to share. I mean, just share a little bit about like cool how it unfolded with your career, and then I want to talk a little bit more about um, the deeper the deeper why you know your yeah. kids your purpose yourself all that so we'll talk about that yeah. in a sec but tell, tell us a little bit about like you're not in the same job anymore yeah. like tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about how learning through this process and stepping more into your confidence in yourself has led you to where you are now yeah so when i found you i was i just started a new job where things were not going well and i had had some situations that were just ethical problems at my work and i and i did have a good boundary around that i never had any question about ethics in my in my life or in my workplace, but I didn't have enough of a boundary to say, I'm not, I can't stay here. This is not my company. This is not for me. I'm really struggling because this is an unethical behavior. But, um, you know, there's other things that push and pull as to why you may or not choose a job. And so, um, you know, so I was dealing with wanting to hold boundaries and feeling the need to hold boundaries and feeling like I was being pushed to hold boundaries about things that I knew were true to me, but I did not have the skills. I did not know how to hold a boundary and and consistently hold that boundary and consistently stand firm in my beliefs and not let somebody 
because what had been happening was I would hold a boundary and then somebody would push it and I would relent. That's right. And that, was, and that was a major problem. That's the same as not holding a boundary. That's the same as saying, okay, that's fine. Because it's, if somebody keeps pushing, you have to keep saying, no, that's not okay for me. Cause people are going to push your boundaries all the time. And, um, so when I came to you and we had a very lengthy, very lengthy conversation, I know we'll never forget that conversation, our first call. And, um, you know, I was miserable because I kept trying to hold boundaries, but I did not know how. And I and I would do it in a way that was very um, acrimonious and just sort of not not it from a collaborative perspective. It wasn't like I'm here with you and you're here with me and let's talk clear about boundaries and we're going to work forward together. It was very like defensive boundaries. And that wasn't a good way to hold a boundary either because it didn't bring people into my in, into a way that they could understand where I was coming from and why that it was in, important to me to hold that boundary. So um, so the skill set that I learned about how to hold boundaries, when to tell, like what are the triggers that tell you that you're not holding a boundary strong enough? Like when you start feeling resentful, you have to, you can immediately, you can immediately look back and see, oh, there's that boundary I let slip. That that's why I'm feeling resentful because there's a boundary I did not, I did not continue to uphold. And um, and that's something that to me to me was not just I knew there was a problem. I didn't know how to do it. And the program absolutely taught me how to do it and do it compassionately and do it with love and do it in a in a heart centered way. Yeah. Yeah. That's so that's yeah. so beautiful. And no, but I don't want to forget your question about work. I didn't know. <laughs> no, no, but, it, but it's a it's a perfect lead in because you had to learn all of those things, right? You had to right. learn all of those things to get to the place where eventually you could choose to right. walk away from the job. This is why, you know, in one of our first teachings, we say, don't quit the job yet. Not yeah. yet, you know, or it's not, not the job. It may be you, right? So what do you need to learn so that you don't keep repeating the patterns? So yeah. it sounds like what you had to learn for you is how mm -hmm. to stop giving away your power by being the people pleaser, how to learn the skill set and the tools to hold a boundary, hold that boundary firm, speak up yeah. when you need to speak up, build the confidence, not back down. And then where did that lead you when it when it comes to, um, you know, you, you you walked away from the job that you had. Um, yeah. And I mean, I remember when you were applying for this job. So right. just, just give us a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah. So the funny thing was, I knew I knew early on that the job that I felt like there were ethical concerns that I was able to I knew I was going to walk away from that. I didn't want to just go to any other next job because I felt like I'd be in the same bucket. I think that your point that you just made about if it's like, don't quit the job yet because it may be you. That was like a real eye opener to me because I'm like, oh, it is me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like there is some things about this that I'm contributing to that. And I had not taken accountability and ownership of that up to that point. Like I'd always just said, oh, well, it's it's somebody else's fault. There's a reason why that it's, it, you know, I'm a very nice person and I'm very smart. So therefore this is not working it's their fault. <laughs> but I had not ever taken ownership for the fact that I was contributing to the problem. Yeah. And so, but, but with that, like I did a lot of interviewing and I did a lot of, it took me a good, probably two solid years to find a new job because every time I interviewed or I had a conversation or I looked at an opportunity and I just was like, no, nope, this doesn't check all the boxes and I'm willing to wait for the one that does. Like I'm willing, it it was, it was too far away or it didn't have the right feel or it didn't have the right industry or didn't have the right, whatever it was. And I was, I just wasn't, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to bend on those requirements, which were ineffectively were boundaries around what I wanted my work life to be. And, um, and I waited and I, and I turned opportunities down and I, and people who would call me and say, why did you turn that down? That was a great opportunity. And I said, no, it just wasn't right for me. I can't say why it just wasn't right for me. And so I, you know, and I continued to move from there. And then over time, um, you know, continuing the, the process of just interviewing and having conversations and, and getting to know people and looking at opportunities. And then it finally came to pass that the, the opportunity that's the exact right industry, the exact right location, the exact right leadership team, female leadership team, the exact right um, job title and role and level of, of superiority or, or seniority, I should say, um, it came to me like it, it It literally came in my inbox saying we'd like you to apply for this job and I was like oh my god this is the job I've been waiting for for years and I I'm so grateful when I look back at the other opportunities that I kind of was like well that probably is okay but it doesn't quite feel right but it's probably good enough and I just said no you know I'm not going to do that because it just doesn't work I'm willing to to let this unfold in the right way I really want to take a moment to highlight what you're saying here for everybody listening, because this is such a tremendous celebration. The ability to say, I know what I want. Mm -hmm. I know what my boundaries are. I know what I'm worth, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to say, I'm not going to settle. Right. Yeah. 
Right. And I think this is when women come into our program, their lives, like you said, yours, like yeah. it all looked yeah. real good on paper, you know, like yeah. it was good enough. Yeah. Right. Good enough. The other jobs were good enough, but oftentimes high achieving, successful, ambitious women who look good on the outside, mm -hmm. right. Are secretly settling, They're right. secretly settling. Like you knew that people could look at you and be like, well, she's got it all figured out, but it was, you knew you were settling. You knew yeah. there was more. And mm -hmm. so I really want to anchor in for everybody listening here. What Chase is saying is that Chase had to learn to value herself, had mm -hmm. to, to say no, to get really clear on what she wanted and what her priorities were and not settle, right? Mm -hmm. Until those things were met. And that takes right. a tremendous amount, not just of, of um, practical, right? Planning, yeah. interviewing, yeah. looking, waiting. But I love what you said that it just showed up. And we yeah. hear that happen all the time yeah. in the program, right? It's yeah. like you do that inner work to, to yeah. kind of clear out what's getting in the way, to stop giving away your power, to get clear. Yeah. Um, and then and then opportunities just begin to emerge. Yeah. And so yeah. you've got a good, you've got the job you want. They're right. a, an amazing female leadership team. You're mm -hmm. not commuting nearly as not far mm -mm. anymore. <laughs> but you are a lot, right? Uh, you're making more money, more like money. significantly. Mm -hmm. More money. <laughs> <It's really> more <laughs> money every year. Right. I remember you saying that you were like, yeah. and this program paid for itself, like yeah. by like, like multiple, like threefold, yeah, yeah, threefold. <laughs> and so I really just want to anchor this in for everybody. This is why we say, like, you know, don't just you do the quick fix of like yeah. quit the job or it's this. It's just like you right. have to do that inner work so you yeah. can truly have the life that you want. Now, I know Chase for you, it was more than just your job because I right. remember right. on that call yeah. there were lots of tears. There's a lot of tears. <laughs> and, I, and I just wanna I just wanna go there because yeah. it was it's more than the job. It's always more than the job. Yeah. For you, what was your bigger why in doing this work? It just it, it just felt like I did all the things I was supposed to do and yet I was miserable. So like, you know, I just couldn't I couldn't piece it together. Like I did I went to college, I did this, I did that, I you know I I I just, I was, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't believe that this was going to be it. Like this was adult life that you were going to have work and kids and sleep. And that's it. Like, and, and just, I it just, I was so burnt out. Like I just wanted to just throw it all away because I just didn't have, I didn't have any sense of who I was or where I was or what I was doing. Like, it just didn't feel, it didn't feel like it was, um, it, it just didn't, I couldn't believe that that was what I had worked so hard to get to you know, that this was where I was. And, and there was a lot of other behavior patterns that were symptoms of the problem as well. And that included like spending too much, eating too much, all of these kinds of things that were or spending too much time on social media, things that were like the, the, the things that I would do to try to um, numb the, the discomfort I was feeling about feeling burnt out and feeling resentful and feeling like I wasn't um, having, I wasn't having the, the life I'd wanted. And that was also adding to the problem because I wasn't facing the reality of, what I needed to do to get to the life I wanted. And um, all of that numbing and all of that avoidance, so much avoidance, so much avoidance. I remember avoidance was a big topic for me. And even in going through the program, like there was one week where I was really stuck on a section and you were like, why? And I'm like, I just, I don't know. I just feel like, and you're like, you're, it's avoidance. Like you're avoiding working through this really hard section because this is a really hard section that you really need to work through and it's hard and you're avoiding it. <laughs> and that was like, oh, too late. You can do too good. <laughs> And it was just, it was that, that lifestyle of avoidance. And that was the thing. It was like, oh, I'm going to eat this and I'll make me feel better. I'm going to buy this and that'll make me feel better. And I'm going to do this scrolling and that's going to make me feel better. But it was totally, I was outside of my heart. Like I wasn't, I wasn't alive with it. And it was, it was awful. And I just now having gone through the process and gone through the program and done and make no mistake, it is not easy work. It is so important, but it is not easy. <laughs> and, and gone through all of that. Now I can say like, I don't have those same um, lifestyle symptoms of the of the bigger problem, and that was that was a big that was a big huge um, that was a big relief in my life. Like even getting out of debt and and just sort of you know avoid you know taking breaks from social media because it was just not a healthy relationship. So many things have changed and made my life so much more um, so much richer. That's incredible, Chase. I mean, I really just like want us all to like really celebrate what you're saying here, that there was a lifestyle before of mm -hmm. numbing and avoiding, and it was a mm -hmm. symptom of not yeah. wanting to look at the bigger stuff that, yeah. you know, and then you go through the program and it's not easy, right? Because right. we're going to say, 
oh, hey, you think it's about burnout or you think it's about this, you think it's about your job. Well, we're going to really get to the root of what's going on here. It's not easy work. You've got to be willing to be self-reflective. And, you mm -hmm. know, you leaned in, you did the work, you showed up, you called yeah. it out when you were resisting, yeah. right? You did. I did. Yeah. And, and, and now these patterns of overeating, over shopping, over spending, over numbing, over social media, and like mm -hmm. all of this stuff, mm -hmm. like that's not there anymore because mm -hmm. you because those are the symptoms of a bigger mm -hmm. problem. And we got to the root of what was really happening. Right. You got two young boys I do. And, <laughs> and a husband. Yeah. And can you just give us a glimpse of of what life is like with them now? Do you think they they know they know that mama and, and wife? Like how do they how do they react to you now? They know they notice a difference. They did in the program, I remember. Yeah, I mean they I will say the funny thing um, with them is that I'm teaching them what it looks like for a woman to hold a boundary. And to me, for my two little boys, that's one of the most important things I can do. Like, I'm not this fawning, like, you know, Betty Crocker type mom. Like, I say to them, no, excuse me, I need you to go pick up your clothes off the floor or whatever it is that I'm asking them to do. And I hold, I hold them accountable and I hold boundaries with them when I say, okay, we're doing this at this time, or we're going here at this time, or we have to get our teeth brushed so we can do this. And they start pushing back. I have no resentfulness against them because I'm not letting them push back. Kids are, kids are ripe to push back on boundaries. They want to test those envelopes. They want to push those limits to learn where it's safe. And holding a boundary with a child is actually one of the most comforting things you can do for them so that they know exactly what to predict. Like they don't, it's it, the more, a small child, especially the more like freedom you give them, the more it stresses them because they just don't know what's safe. And so when you're clearly telling them, this is what we're doing. This is the behavior we're going to do. This is where we're going to go. This is what we're going to do. We're not going to do those things. That actually gives them a tremendous amount of comfort. And I will say that my behavioral, um, my older son had some behavioral issues. Um, he's almost six, so he's not quite six, but he had behavioral issues when he was three and four. And a lot of that had to do with my inability to hold boundaries as a parent that he was stressed out and that resulted in his temper tantrums and those kinds of, you know, preschooler behaviors that now, like I've been able to tell my husband, like I mentioned this to him the other day, I said, tell me that that is not a meaningful change in his behavior. Like, yes, he's matured and yes, he's gotten older, but those behavioral issues that we were facing at that time are, are totally gone, totally gone. Like there is just, it's very clear and he respects boundaries and he understands that this is what we do and this is what adults do and this is how you behave. And, and he's, he's very, He's, he's ready to rise to the occasion. And to me, that's all I can ask for is that he's ready to be a respectful, responsible person. Right. And you are raising two boys, right? Right now in, 20, in yeah. 2020, and you're yeah. teaching them like, hey, women yeah. have boundaries. Mama right. has boundaries. Like yeah. I, I can trust myself. You can trust me. And I love mm -hmm. that you're seeing behavioral changes in him and just a relationship change in that. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that this happens. I get to see this happen with you and the other alumni of like how the work that you do in this program directly impacts the mm -hmm. next generation of kids. It's exactly. such a gift, Chase. And yeah. like that, no one could ever take that away from you, right? right. That like this is the trickle down effect, right? Of like yeah. you getting to be the type of mom that you want to be. And that doesn't mean like, whatever you want to do. It means right. sometimes that means no, like, you know, we talk about the great mother and the fierce warrior. And it's like, yeah. sometimes that means fierce warrior mama. Right. I just yeah. really want to celebrate. I want to celebrate that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, go ahead. You're going to say something else. I was going to say, I just, I think also that, um, I've also, with my husband, I think that I'm a much better communicator now than I was, even though we've been together for decades. Like I'm a much better communicator now than I was when we were early. Now I'm really grateful. He's a tremendous guy who's a good communicator to begin with, but I'm, I'm clear about my boundaries and I say, and I make that very clear to him. And then I encourage him to also be clear about his boundaries. So there's mm -hmm. times when I will ask him of something, or ask, ask something of him and he'll say like, okay, he can do that. But, you know, I'll say, if you can't, then please tell me you can't do that. And that's okay. It's okay to hold a boundary. And I'm sort of, I'm encouraging other people to stay in that space as well, because to me, that's the right way to have a collaborative environment where you can say what you need and you can reject what, is not going to work for you. And that's okay. That's right. So I love that the theme of our conversation. And, yeah. and one of the biggest things that you have taken away from this work is boundaries for yeah, self totally. and for others. Totally. Now, you don't just learn boundaries, right? If you could have no. learned that by yourself, you would have done it. So what I'm curious for you to share here, what was like one of the big shifts for you inside of the program? If you can remember, 
even if it was something like that shit crazy that I told you to do. Um, <laughs> oh, I can tell you, I can absolutely tell you because I thought it was so, so weird at the time and here was the resistance came up on this too. Right. Um, I was having a problem feeling my feelings. I was having a problem actually feeling my feelings and this was the symptom of the avoidant lifestyle. And what was happening was that um, there's an activity within the program that was like, I want you to write down your feelings at all times for like three days or five days or something like that. And I would get for like from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. And then I'd like abandon the rest of the day. And then I'd try to start again the next morning, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. I'd write it down and then I'd abandon the rest of the day. And then I came to, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm having a hard time with this, this activity. It's not working for me. And you're like, Chase, you need to feel your feelings. And I was like, mm, okay. So, <laughs> so I finally felt my feelings and my feelings had been numbed for so long that it was like a very strange experience to feel and and give a title to my feelings and understand that my feelings are valid and they they ebb and flow tremendously throughout the day and that doesn't mean anything is good or anything is bad it just means that that is what it's like to feel feelings i had not felt my feelings in 20 years if not more so it was that was a life changing experience to feel my feelings and then realize that i can feel a feeling and it doesn't have to be a bad thing. It's okay to feel a bad feeling. It doesn't mean you need to have a bad reaction to it. It just is like, oh, I'm having a bad feeling right now. Okay, that'll come and that'll go just like all my other feelings throughout the day. That's right. And that was, that was a tremendous, tremendous thing. And again, I had so much resistance for it at first. Yeah, I remember. I mean, I knew, I figured that's the one you were going to say because yeah. I remember yeah. you starting, <laughs> like, and totally. and starting and the, and the exercise is five days of feelings in a row. And if you miss one, you start back at one. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's so hard for many of the women in the program. And the reason for that is because we've been on a hamster wheel. Yeah. This part of why high achieving, successful, ambitious women get to that point where they're about to burn out is mm -hmm. because they're just going through the motions mm -hmm. and, they're, and we're numb and it's like mm -hmm. next 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 and we push it down and push it down and push it down and most of the women who come to us are like you right mm -hmm. they're super flipping capable they mm -hmm. have a high tolerance for pain and discomfort mm -hmm. and their lives have pushed them up against the corner back against the wall hair on fire when they come to us right mm -hmm. and it's like mm -hmm. i guess i'm gonna do something about this or i'm just gonna you know yeah must right and so just acknowledging the doorway of feeling the feelings was such an important lesson for yeah. you and it is for every single woman uh who comes into this program in a way yeah. and right. it's a part of how we reclaim our power right especially yeah. as women and as female leaders right we can't cut that part of ourselves off so right. Right. um I, that's great. That's absolutely beautiful. And it's also, I will say it's also made me really compassionate towards other people when they feel their feelings. Like that's okay. Like I've and I've made that with my team at work and with other people in my life. Like you're, it's okay to. I say that with my child all the time. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be angry. That's okay. You're allowed to be angry. End of end of sentence. Period. No problem. You know. I, I love that you said that because your ability now to sit with your own feelings and mm -hmm. not them or push them down or work through them or shop through yeah. them or eat through them your ability to do that now increases your ability to allow your kids to feel yeah. their feelings yeah. allows your ability to for your team to feel their feelings and your partner and your bosses and your colleagues etc it's like cool now we're just human and this right. is what compassionate feminine leadership looks like and it's also how we don't burn out right yeah. Right. So I, I love that. And that's also you've done your inner work and now you get to share it with others. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that we haven't talked about yet that you want to be celebrated for? Um, this was doing this program. And I remember I had like major like like buyer's remorse or whatever you want to call it, like the day after I signed up, like, oh my God, what am I doing? Why did I do this? Oh, this is terrible. I shouldn't have done this. Like, um, whatever that fear is or whatever that resistance is that comes up for somebody who's thinking about the program, lean into it. Like I just, I've never met anybody. And I, I know, a, a, you know, however many 30 or 40 women who I've met throughout the course of my engagement with the, with the group that it's like nobody who's done the program has been like, ah, oh, that was a waste of my time. Like nobody, like zero people, zero people have said, I did this program and I'm no better than I was when I started. That's, it's just, that's complete. If you do the program, you will be so much better off emotionally, um, in, in your heart, in your soul, in how you interact with people, on how you see the world, on how you manage stress, on how you, how you like, 
how how you present to the world. It, it's just there is nothing. I've never met anybody who's done this tremendously hard work and not seen the incredible benefits from it. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's people who's looked at that work and said, uh, that's too much work. I can't do that. And that's a different thing. But if you do the work, that's right. then it's absolutely, the results will absolutely be there. Like that's, it's incredible. And that's it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. universal. It's not like, oh, it only works for a certain type of people. No. And what's also true, Chase, you know this, is we only let women into the program that we know we're going to show up and do the work. Like right. I right. wouldn't have fought for you on that breakthrough right. call that we had. <laughs> Right. If I didn't know that you were going to show up and do it, doesn't mean there's resistance, but that's why you've got a team right. of coaches to help right. you through the process. Right. And um, I celebrate that for you of like being on that call, that first call, that breakthrough call, which is like, yeah. cool, we're going to talk about what's going on. We're going to figure out if we can help you. If we can help yeah. you and you're the type of woman who we know will succeed in this program, we'll invite you into the program. If not, yeah. we won't. Right. Simple. And then celebrating the fact that like, I remember, I mean, yeah. it, we were a time difference. You were in the East Coast. I was on the West Coast. It was yeah. like everybody in your house was asleep. Like yeah, it was 11 o'clock at night. Yeah. It was 11 o'clock at night, your time. You know, it was just, it was such a big decision. And then yeah. you waking up that next morning and be like, oh my gosh, is yeah. this okay? And that's what happens every single time we're about to make a big change in our yeah. lives. You know, you, th there was that resistance would rather mm -hmm. you you know, keep shopping or watching right. on Netflix than actually do kind of the inner stuff to, to free you. And I want yeah. to celebrate the fact that you didn't quit. You didn't right. give up, right? Even when there was resistance, you showed up anyways, you leaned in mm -hmm. every single step of the way. And now you are reaping the rewards of that on the yeah. other side. And that's because of the hard work that you put in this work isn't easy and you did it. Yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. now, you know, uh, you know, I don't believe when like we tie pretty bows on things and like life is fixed forever. I don't right. believe that. Like we're all, if we're growing, like we're always going to be stretched. Yeah. But what I want to acknowledge is that you have landed in this place in your life where things are exactly as you would have dreamed of, you know, right. two years ago, right. um, Way better. Yeah. a year ago. And um, is there more room for growth? Yeah, of course, because you're committed to your growth and being right. the best person you can be, which means we'll always keep leveling up in that way. But what I yeah. celebrate for you right now is the way that your life is in this moment during, you know, objectively the hardest year any of us have gone through. Um, yeah. It's easier for you this year than it was last year. And that I, I, I would not have made it through this year if I hadn't already gone through the program last year. Like it would have been a, such a harder year if I hadn't already had these tools. Yeah. And, um, and I do want to say that, yes, I did the work and I did the hard work and that was the big piece of it. But Julie, you and the team, the other coaches knew where people have pitfalls and you knew when to call it out of people to say, nope, nope, we're not doing that. And here's why. And we're going to, you knew when somebody was demonstrating like just resistance versus I really have a problem. And that to me was a game changer that you knew the psychology of how to push somebody through that challenge. And that helped me see that, see it, you know, forward. I couldn't have done it. Like I couldn't have done this as like a there's no such thing as this program, like on a self-study basis, like you have to have that coaching aspect. And then also, you know, being a part of the, the weekly calls and having the benefit of hearing other women have coaching opportunities. And that to me was seeing that, that here's how I'm going to call you out on your BS <laughs> and we're going to go from there. <laughs> totally. And that's exactly why we've set it up this way. You've got yeah. you coaching, you, you, we, we're there to walk you through it every step of the way, because mm -hmm. you can't do, we can't do this on our own. This is why everybody's in the gym, as you know, in January yeah. and they're mostly empty again by March. Right. Yeah. So yeah. we need accountability. We need support. Um, you know, we need somebody to hold our hand and call us out on our BS when we're trying to get a little squirmy and we yeah. need to do it in, in community. Um, so last question here, and then I'll just kind of pull out some takeaways and, and, yeah. and celebrate you. Um, if you were to share the biggest win that you've had either internally or externally since doing this work, what's the biggest win for you? Um, reclaiming my own life path. That's like right. that's, that's what it is. It's reclaiming my own life path. There was a long time, many years that I was on I, nobody in particular's life path, but it certainly wasn't mine. It was a combination of a lot of people's opinions about what my life should be, but I have reclaimed my own life path. And that to me is the most important thing I could have done was to say, now this is my plan. 
I know what I want and I'm working towards this, that, and the next thing. And I love hearing that because, you know, we really look at the program. There's three steps of the program. The first part is remember, remember, remember yourself. The mm -hmm. second part is reclaim, reclaim mm -hmm. your power. And mm -hmm. the third part is redefine your life. So yeah. just really celebrating really. this journey of remembering and reclaiming and redefining and um, all that is in store for you now. Yeah. So uh, I celebrate that with you. Anything else you want to conclude with before we wrap up here? Anything you want to say to the women watching who may be considering joining, who are on the fence, who aren't sure if it's going to work for them? Um, yeah. Anything you want to say to them? I mean, I definitely would say if, if um, the breakthrough call, again, was a breakthrough. So if you're, you know, there was no obligation with regard to participating in that. And that to me was like, that made it really easy for me to say, okay, well, I'll just have this call. And if it seems weird or doesn't work, then, and I think that's on both sides, right? Like you were saying that you don't, not, not just everybody will sort of be admitted into the program. Um, so if you're thinking about it, then definitely schedule one of the breakthrough calls. Or I even found that your um, free webinars that you do are, tr were tremendously valuable. Like I remember taking away, going away from one of the free webinars and being like, oh my God, like this is like really important information that I just got for free. And it felt really powerful just to have that, that information. Um, like I said earlier, like I know nobody who's done the program and has regretted doing it. Like everybody I know who's done it has felt like a tremendous improvement in a lot of different things in their life. Um, so certainly if that's something that, um, if you feel burnt out and you feel like you're in a position where you don't, you're not on your own life path or you don't know how to say no, or you don't know how to hold a boundary or you're, or you're working 16 hours a day between work and life and family and, and people who keep making you feel resentful for doing things you don't want to do, then absolutely this is the right program because it just, it teaches you those skills. So good, Chase. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing yeah. all of that. And <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure that I post the, the our webinar class link below. And, and yeah. Chase, there's a lot of information. And then if you want to take it to the next level and implement all of that, book a breakthrough call with us. I'm going to post the link right here. This is when Chase and I got to talk for the first time. <laughs> and uh, we invited her into the program because we knew we could. she could be one of our next success stories too. So yeah. it's juliesantiago.com forward slash talk. You'll book a call. You'll grab a time with me or somebody on our team. Our, we have amazing breakthrough coaches on our team as well who are trained in helping you get the breakthrough and um if we know that we can help you and you can be one of our next amazing success stories like chase <laughs> then we'll tell you about the program and we'll invite you in and if not that's okay too right there's no obligation chase here's what i want to pull out you came yeah. to us you know 15 months ago right yeah. 14 mm -hmm. 15 months ago yeah barely a year and you were exhausted, burnt out, lost. You wanted to burn it all down. You weren't being the top of mom you wanted to be. You just said you were you were miserable. You were numbing with food and with Netflix and social media and more work and um, yeah. shopping and all the things, right? Um, and you didn't know what to do. You knew you were in the wrong place, but you didn't know how to get to the right place. And we yeah. fast forward your life now, like you are radiant. You are a <laughs> leader. You have a new job making more money, less commute. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Working for a team that you deeply respect, setting yeah. boundaries with yourself and you redefine your life like you've claimed what okay. you want for you on your terms. And because of that, all those symptoms of numbing have gone. Right. Um, mm -hmm. You're more direct with your kids, with your husband. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what I see is that you're just more content, like there's a happiness mm -hmm. and a peace that wasn't there before. And I just really? celebrate that so much. Thank you. <laughs> There's so much more ease in my life because I don't have to juggle different needs. I, I, I focus on what I know is right. And that's what I have to do. Thank you, babe. Thank you for yeah. taking the time to, to celebrate with us and to share your yeah. incredible story. I know it's going to inspire so many people about what's possible for them. And if you ladies are watching or listening, book a breakthrough call with our team. If you feel pulled to explore whether or not this work could work for you, it's juliesantiago.com forward slash talk. And Chase, thank you for your time, for your wisdom, and for being in our community. I just love watching you soar so much. Thank you, Julie. It's my pleasure. All right, sweetie. I'll talk to you again very soon. Love you. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs>